Hey, coaches, athletes, Michael Hughes here with your co-founder of Jamalzu EDU and movement specialist talking to you about running and the amazing skill and athleticism that I grew up with from junior high all the way to senior year in high school. I was a sprinter. I was a runner and I loved it. And I loved how my training and conditioning really fed into my athleticism. But I, as I got smarter and more educated, I realized that there's so many things missing. And at the end of this video, we're going to be showing you six functional exercises that really tie into the sport of running, whether it be for distance or whether it be for sprinting. But they're key elements that we believe the traditional training and conditioning community around running is missing. So I'm going to dive in deep and really try to unpack in a quick way, but also in a thorough way, how we think there's a spin to running. There's more to it in the training and conditioning world. So let's get ready to dive in right now. So the typical problems that we see with running programs is that they're missing components. That's just really, they're just missing components. There's nothing necessarily wrong with what's going on, but I see a lot of kind of couch to half marathon or that kind of a feel. It's like, let's just get up and let's start running. But that's the one thing that, oh, I'm really going to dive into and say, no. In fact, we don't want to have people running when they come to us and saying, hey, train me for better running. In fact, we see a lot of these things are just lacking a warm up, lacking preparing yourself. Instead of just putting on the shoes and heading outside for a run, we're saying, whoa, 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 spend five, 10 minutes inside your home, office building, wherever the case is, before you go and start running. Don't let your warm up be your run in a sense. And also getting back off that run, just taking those shoes off, going shower, whatever the case is, get back to your day, but we've got to spend another five, 10 minutes at the least letting your body know that you're going to transition itself from this very repetitive motion pattern to something different. So right then and there, I've covered a lot of the big issues with running programs and traditional runners and what they need to add to their program, even if it steals from the length of their run, which I know is a big issue, right? I only have half hour to run. I need to run as far as possible, as long as possible. But I would say you're going to better suit your body for the long term and even short term by shaving five, maybe 15, 20 minutes out of that run time to prepare and de-prepare in a sense, or prepare for the next run. From a biomechanical standpoint, this is the big miss. The big miss is understanding that our pelvis, when we run, goes through rotational movement, that our thoracic spine shoulder girdle, girdle goes through rotational movement, and it goes through those in opposing or out of sync timing, out of sync timing. So just a quick understanding, when we golf, when we throw a baseball or in cases, it goes through in sync motion, meaning the, the trunk and the pelvis both turn right, both turn left, not at the same time, but they both do it essentially relatively at the same time. But when running, when I take my right foot in stride forward, my pelvis is rotated left. Again, when my right foot steps forward, my pelvis is rotated left. Again, I'm overdoing it, but just so you can see it. And when I'm pumping my arms, I'm not just pumping my arm, my shoulder, elbow, wrist, I'm actually pumping my thoracic spine. And it's actually rotating to the right when my left hand comes forward. Again, when my left hand comes forward, my shoulder girdle rotates to the right. And that's an out of sync pattern, as we like to call it. And that right there needs to be really dove into and expressed because that's where our, our I like to say our efficiency comes in, right? That's why we can run and locomote for so long compared to all other land animals because we have that efficiency and that free energy, right? Think about a rubber band. You've just spun up, right? You just turn, 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 turn. Then what happens when you let go of one side, right? It freely unturns, right? All that all that potential energy stored up in that band is released and produces kinetic energy or movement energy. And that's what our obliques, to keep it simple, do as well when we run. When my right foot strides forward, my pelvis rotates to the left, my left arm pumps forward and takes my thoracic spine to the right, boom, those obliques say, ooh, thank you very much for that free energy that I've now stored. I'm gonna release it, and not only release it, but I'm gonna store it and then give it to the opposite side. And so it stores into that opposite side. Obviously, there's still muscle contractions that happen, but it's not 100% muscle contraction. It's also momentous, I like that word, even if it's not a real word, 
it's that freedom of motion that gets stored up on the other side and then continues to release itself as it goes. And that's what makes running so efficient for the human body is free energy. When you don't have that free energy, and there's a lot of other places through, through the body, especially the Achilles tendon, but there's a lot of other places where you don't have that free energy. It takes more energy, therefore, to do it. So therefore, you don't have enough to propel yourself to go even faster or don't have enough to prepare yourself to go even longer, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the one big thing that I want this video to show up on from a biomechanical standpoint is do, does your pelvis have rotation at each acetabulum and does your thoracic spine at all 12 major vertebras have that ability to rotate? If not, again, stick to the very end of this video. I'm going to show you six drills where we can help free that up in ways that, well, maybe you probably, well, more than likely you haven't seen before. So this is the big thing. Why do people want to dive into running? Well, the benefits of it is, are so great. To me, it is the one movement pattern that the human body is great at. It is great at that and like throwing, right? Those two things, like the human body is, is exceptional at those two things. So if you're going to do it, if you're going to train your clients in it, let's see if we can uh, dive into why functional training of running is gonna not only prevent injuries or avoid injuries or lessen them, but it's also gonna increase your, sp your performance in it. Because we believe if you can understand how the body moves to, to avoid injuries, you can't prevent all of them, but avoid a lot of them, then those same strategies reversed are gonna go into the sport's performance. So as we, let's just kind of understand real quick the, the movements that running is going to kind of cover, and then we'll dive into the exercises. So let's just take it, let's break into two steps. The first is when your front leg is landing on the ground. And then the second motion is when your back leg is pushing off the ground. Because remember, running is a single leg sport, but we can't always train it in the facility or the case is out on the track on a single leg because that, that produces a lot of stress. And we want to have training conditioning that, not, that gives us more potential for runs, doesn't always stress us, stress us, stress us, because to be a better runner, you kind of have to run a lot, especially for those marathon runners or for those distant runners, those ultra marathon runners, you got to put miles underneath those feet, no matter what. So how do we make your training conditioning not remove those miles from your feet because you're so tired or so undertrained. So what we like to do is train, not necessarily in a two stance, but in a single stance, but a little bit of support. A little bit of support so we have the sensation of loading. When I mean by loading, I mean by tension that's coming through the body as if I was actually through an eccentric load. Just kind of think about that, where I'm, I'm slowing down motion. So that's our first drill. And in that, what we're gonna have is relative foot ankle pronation. Relative, right? That's a, I'm gonna use that word a lot because it depends on a lot of factors, whether it be the slope of the trail, slope of, of the road. But biomechanically, we wanna have the ability for our foot to go through pronation and absorb the ground. From there, when we get pronation at the foot ankle, we're going to get tibia and fibula internal or spinning in motion. And that's going to resort in the knee and the femur to get some internal rotation. That's going to create a little bit more valgus in the knee. Not a whole lot, right? That's too, too crazy, but a little bit. I like to think about knee valgusing in running is like taking a shower, right? That's a hot burning shower. No one wants that. But that's a cold freezing shower. No one wants that either. We want a little bit of warm, a little bit of warm, which gives us the ability to internally rotate our hip a deduct or adduct our hip, and of course it's going through flexion. That allows that glute muscle to go through three-dimensional or tri-loading. Loading is, this, is, is basically eccentric muscle tension, right? And that's like pulling a bow and arrow back, right? The more we can get that bow to come back, the more that arrow can shoot forward. So if we can get biomechanically relative those motion patterns, that hip's gonna say, that posterior hip's gonna say, thank you very much, I'm ready to kick and fire forward. Now, I just mentioned the glute. There's obviously the entire leg muscle that goes through that as well, but that's the big player. That's why we've got this big back butt right here and not a big front butt because we propel ourselves forward way more powerfully than we go backwards. And backwards running is a whole nother amazing topic that we'll have to dive into later. Basically, I'm gonna show that at the very end of the, end of the video. So if we wanna have that, now when we have that hip internal rotation, 
hip adduction or adduction to hip flexion, we're gonna wanna have upper body rotation to the opposite way. So that's gonna be rotation to the right. We're gonna want a little bit of kind of flexion in our trunk. Now, depending on how you're gonna be running, we wanna have a little bit of flexion to the side, to that same side. And then of course, we're gonna wanna have extension through the thoracic spine. And we call that upper body coiling or thoracic spine tri-loading as we're running in, in, that, in that pattern. And that gets our lateral motion going, that gets our core and our front going. And of course, it gets our rotation going as well. So we can propel out of that and run as well. So again, in these six exercises below, we're gonna dive into how that happens. So that's how the front leg and the upper body goes. What about that back hip? For that back hip, we have prone, pronation in front. When we're pushing off, we're gonna to wanna to have relative supination on the back. That's gonna be that kind of rolling out feel, right? That big rolling out feel where the foot starts to lock up, all those mid-tarsal joints get bound together, where the heel goes inward, but still, here's a big, big key, where that's gonna create external rotation at the tib and fib, external rotation at the femur, but relatively internal rotation at the hip, because this hip is rotating so much further and faster than this bone is turning outward. If you look at it, as a relative speaking, we have internal rotation, and of course, our trunk goes through the same thing just up on the opposite side as we push off. So if we can understand those motion patterns in running, then we can train and condition for so much more performance and therefore reverse engineer to understand how the body is overdoing itself for injury. So let's dive into how these six exercises that I picked are not the only six by any means, but to get your, your mind wrapped around how we can train the upper body, how we can train the core, and how we can train the lower body, and then how we can train it all together so you can start to make your training and conditioning that much better. But before I go there, understand that a warm up and a cool down, what does that really mean for us, right? It means it's preparing the body through its elasticity ranges of motion. That's what I like to think about a warm up and a cool down. What are our motions that we want to do? How do we get the body to be that springy rubber band effect? And then how do we allow that springy rubber band effect to be powerful? And then how do we cool it down so we don't just go back to our desk, to our chair, and the muscles are still in that hyper tone or that kind of really excited state where they're still in that contractile sense and then it limits our ability to recover because we want to have the flushing system, right? When you're done washing the dishes, what do you do with that sponge? Well, I hope you don't just let it all soaked up, gunked up on, on the counter. That's not a healthy looking sponge. It smells after a little bit, right? You wring it out, you flush it out with some fresh water, you keep it clean, and then you wring it out really good so when it's done on the countertop, it's ready for the next use. That's a cool down, right? That not only happens from the muscle, but from the fashion to the chemicals in your blood, in your lymph, and in your intercellular and extracellular fluids, right? So that's why nutrition is super important too, because you want to start flushing in a sense, right? A way to use that word, that system for the next workout. So without that being said, in our running warm up and, and cool down, that's another video. But let's go into the exercises of running for the biomechanics and the functionality and the performance what we're gonna do. Now I'm gonna start with the upper body and I'm gonna start with a drill that maybe a lot of you haven't seen, especially for these first two. But I'm gonna grab onto a mob stick or this could be any sort of broomstick where the case is, but I love this drill because it allows for the upper body to get warmed up and prepared for running. Grabbing onto a stick and we're gonna call it an underhand swing. So I'm gonna swing at you. It basically looks like I'm paddling backwards in a canoe, but if you look at how my shoulders are moving through this underhand figure eight movement, as we like to call it. You can see how my, my spine and my trunk are actually rotating. I'm actually getting lateral flexion, and because I'm going underhand, I'm scooping up, I actually get extension through my thoracic spine. Hmm, kind of feels like running, actually, at least through my trunk. And that's really the most important thing. Me pumping my elbows, uh, pumping my arms is good, but it's not even close to as powerful as what this thoracic spine can do. Now, if I was a thrower, just real quick, I can go overhand, right? 
I can go overhand as well. Just if you quickly, if you're into the pitching, into the kind of the throwing aspect. And then another amazing tool that's really getting a lot of press right now, and it's a huge asset in your training and conditioning facility, is what's called an RMT rope. This RMT rope is essentially an extension of what that the mope stick can do, but if you can add that same motion into a rotational pattern as well, you get much more freedom of motion through the arms because this is not a fixed rod in a sense, and it's a more of an elastic kind of flow. And this rope allows us to get a little bit more shoulder, and I can get into a running position as well, and I'll have to get some good motion, and I can even add a double motion. And if you just heard or saw, I just whipped my leg. That's what I love about the RMT rope. It allows you to have Instant feedback is if your angulations, if your motions are accurate or at least balanced on both sides. So I can go through a double one as well as I come to one side and do it again and see I get extra lateral, fl lateral flexion, a little bit more rotation as I dive deep into it. I can switch to the opposite stance. I can put more weight on my front. I can put more weight on my back and you can go for speed as well as you work through that tool. That's an RMT rope. Reach out for any comments if you have more questions about that. We have an entire training on how that rope could be moved. And it's, uh, again, one of the most up and coming uh, pieces of equipment that I feel will revolutionize the training and the conditioning world. Now, those are some upper body drills. What about some lower body drills? Well, let's not forget about the word locomotion. Now, because running is locomotion, and it's actually, it's a running, right? And, but we can run not just forward, because when we run forward, we put certain stresses on certain muscles. But if you're, what if you run backwards, right? What if we get that backwards running, use that as a warm up? We're gonna start working the same muscles that are used for running forward, just in a different intensity. And that allows those muscles to be built up in a way that help us propel forwards. But we can also run sideways. Now we're putting more help into the lateral and medial running muscles, but then we've got to think about other patterns, other patterns of, of locomotion. Shuffling, karaoke, or grapevine, or the case is a braided run. I could do a forward shuffle, forward shuffle, and put more focused attention on certain muscles. That would be an anterior shuffle. Well, because we know our lateral shuffle, right? And then we can even do a crossover fixed lateral, which really puts much more work through, the, through those lateral hips. There is rotational shuffling as well, but again, we have the karaoke pattern, which is a good sideways drill, but we can also do that same drill going forwards. And why I bring up these different locomotion drills? Because running is a, typically an overuse injury sport when we get injured. It's too much of the same thing, and our body can't manage it. Well, what if I train and condition with other locomotion drills that still get my thoracic spine, shoulders working, still get my lungs working, still put mileage on my feet, but don't stress the joints and the muscles in the exact same way as my long run would? Would there still be great benefit? I think the answer is definitely yes. So good ways to add more variety and more focused attention on running muscles without actually doing forward running. What about some strength? What about some power? Well, I got a power block here. What I love about Olympic lifting is that it's so applicable to so many things. But what I don't like about traditional Olympic lifting is, is it's typically a fixed steel bar with weights on either end, which is not very applicable to most things. So what if I take a hang clean through a single dumbbell, put myself into a running stride. I can take that hand and load into it. Take that dumbbell and load into it. I can power off this foot. Now watch my back foot as I go into a clean and step forward. And you see how my hand even came forward authentically like I was actually running. And I can turn that into a pivot. Boom, 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 boom. And I feel that glute, I feel that hamstring, I feel that rotational core loading and then unloading just the same way that I would be if I was going through a hard acceleration sprint. I can switch sides and do the exact same thing on the other side. So that's a great power drill, great strength drill if you slow it down a little bit more. What about that integrated core that helps us run, helps us connect our lower body to our upper body? Well, I'm gonna break it down to some super basic points, like a plank. 
But as we do, and as I would instruct you to do for a plank, is not hold. Because that's not how the proprioceptors of the running body are trained. They need to be trained through movement. So what does the hips do when they run? Well, they actually flex a little bit, and they actually extend a little bit. So let's move that core through that. They actually laterally shift or translate and laterally flex. So let's do that through the pelvis. And of course, as we talked about already, they rotate. So let's rotate through that core. Let's get that transverse plane in involved. Well, I can make this a little bit more functional because running is not a two foot sport. I don't have two feet connected to the ground. So I can simply lift a foot, drive a knee. Now this foot's floating off the ground like I'm in through that kind of drive phase. And I can do that same pattern, that same pattern, and that same pattern. I can even take one elbow off the ground or the opposite elbow of my in foot and have that same feel through the upper body. So a good way to play with some planks dynamically and in three planes of motion. And then what about that all full body, put it all together to make it smell like running. Let's grab onto a Viper. Let's put our right foot in front into what we would call a stride or RXX stance. Let's get our trunk to rotate to the opposite side. Now I'm in the exact same biomechanics, at least from a two foot stance as walking, running, and I can propel the body to the opposite side, keeping my eyes fixed as I'm running forward and rotate through. And then I can even take that, challenge some more lateral muscles as I get a little bit of side to side, what we call angulation, drive, 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 drive. The more the speed, the more the power. The more the duration of slow and steady, the more you can train that body to extend and go further. So besides these six drills that we showed you, hope you were able to understand how the body moves through running more from a joint by joint segment. You understand the power and the importance of how it is to prepare the body to run versus just go and run as your training and conditioning evolves as you start. Because running is the sport that I believe everyone should practice at least have the access to and the availability because this gift of movement is amazing and how we do it through locomotion should be expressed more and more and more. Hope this gave you some more amazing insight on how the body works. Feel free to like, subscribe, check out some more videos below and check out some descriptions below if you want to understand the biomechanics of movement just like we do. Take care, see you next time.